Hey everyone, quick back chemistry basics here. Let's talk about eukaryotic transcription. The enzyme required for the process of transcription is the RNA polymerase. The prokaryotes have only one RNA polymerase enzyme, while the eukaryotes have three RNA polymerase enzyme. RNA polymerase 2 is a major polymerase enzyme involved in the transcription of mRNA in eukaryotes. The RNA polymerase 2 along with other proteins known as the transcription factors are required for the initiation of transcription. The transcription factors are also known as general transcription factors. Let's see how the transcription factors are designated. The initial two letters are written as TF which stands for transcription factor. The 2 indicates that it's a transcription factor for RNA polymerase 2. The letter next to 2 can be A, B, D, E, F, and H, depending on the function of transcription factor. Because there are so many transcription factors involved in eukaryotic transcription, it's easy to memorize them with the help of mnemonics. For example, the mnemonics of TF2A is apple, TF2B is ball, TF2D is dog, TF2E is elephant, TF2F is fan, TF2H is helicopter. Let's see function of each of them. In the first step of initiation of transcription, the transcription factor EF2D binds the Tata element in the promoter. The eukaryotic promoter is about 40 nucleotides long and located upstream and downstream of the transcription start site. About 30 nucleotides upstream to the start site, there is an AT rich sequence known as the Tata box or the Tata element. TF2D has a protein called TBP which binds Tata sequence. TBP is also known as Tata binding protein. Once TBP binds Tata sequence, it bends the DNA by 80 degrees. This bending of DNA further helps in the binding of other transcription factors. This includes TF2A and TF2B. TF2A. TF2A helps in stabilizing the binding of TF2D with the promoter. TF2B interacts with TBP and the promoter region downstream to the Tata sequence. TF2B helps in the recruitment of RNA polymerase 2 on the promoter. Now, the RNA polymerase cannot bind the promoter on its own. A transcription factor TF2F helps RNA polymerase 2 to bind the promoter. TF2F interacts with TBP and TF2B while recruiting the RNA polymerase. TF2F also prevents RNA polymerase to contact DNA outside the promoter. Next, transcription factor TF2E binds the pre-initiation complex. TF2E helps in the binding of other transcription factor TF2H. TF2H is a very large complex with total 9 subunits. Out of 9, 2 subunits have ATPase activity. Using energy from ATP, it acts like a helicase and melts the promoter. And this finally causes transition from pre-initiation complex to open complex. The remaining 7 subunits of TF2H has a kinase activity. This kinase activity phosphorylates the C-terminal domain or the tail of RNA polymerase 2, leading to promoter escape and transcription elongation. So we can remember the events of transcription initiation with the following mnemonics. The dog eats the apple and plays with the football. He gets tired and sits in front of the fan. When he sees an elephant, he runs away in the helicopter. 
Transcription elongation. Once RNA polymerase have initiated transcription, it shifts into elongation phase. The transcription factors that helps in elongation are called elongation factors. There are two such elongation factors, TFEB and TF2S. TFEB is recruited to polymerase by transcription activators. TFEB is a kinase protein and phosphorylates serine residues in the C-terminal domain of the polymerase. This phosphorylation stimulates elongation. The other factor involved in elongation is TF2S. Now, the rate at which the RNA polymerase transcribes the DNA is not same at all DNA sequences. At some DNA sequences, the rate of transcription is fast, while at other DNA sequences, it can be slow. TF2S helps to increase the rate of transcription at the region where the rate of transcription becomes slow. It also does not allow RNA polymerase to pause and encourages to move on. 5 dash capping. As the RNA polymerase starts elongation, the mRNA starts forming. The formation of mRNA occurs in 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The first RNA processing event that occurs during elongation is the 5' dash capping. During this process, the terminal gamma phosphate of the nucleotide is removed by the enzyme RNA triphosphatase. In the next step, guanyl transferase enzyme carries out reaction between beta phosphate of the first nucleotide and alpha phosphate of GTP. Once guanine is attached, methyl transferase enzyme attaches a methyl group to the guanine nucleotide. This structure is called Phi-cap and it helps in the recruitment of mRNA on the ribosome for the initiation of translation. Termination of transcription. When the RNA polymerase reaches the end of the gene, the C-terminal domain of the RNA polymerase interacts with two proteins, CSTF and CPSF. The CSTF stands for cleavage stimulation factor and CPSF stands for cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor. When the end of the gene is transcribed into RNA, these proteins are recruited to the mRNA by the C-terminal domain of RNA polymerase. The cleavage stimulation factor CSTF cleaves the mRNA. Once the mRNA is cleaved, CSTF disassociates. The CPSF then recruits poly-A polymerase, which adds about 200 adenine residues at the 3' end, giving rise to poly-A tail. The poly-A polymerase uses ATP for this purpose. Once poly-A tail is formed, the poly-A binding protein binds the poly-A tail, and during this step, CPSF is released from the mRNA. The poly-A binding protein prevents degradation of poly-A tail.